I'm always five. I'm always five minutes late when you're ready. No, it's just the last couple of times. <laughs> Sorry about that. How you doing? How was your week? Good. good. It was a good week. Uh, UFC fights were on. There was a boxing match on. I mean, there's a lot of. At least there's something for me to watch this weekend. You know. So thank God for UFC because I'd be fucking lost without my sports. You know. I need to get into that. I ha- I've never subscribed to UFC, so I can't actually watch this stuff when it comes out. You don't, you're not into boxing or fighting or no? You never were? No, I was actually naturally. I've just – actually, it's really it's a really funny story. So basically when I was very young, I was very into martial arts. But right. I, I turned away from martial arts because when I was very young, which you were in the same time as, as me, we yeah. didn't know which martial art actually worked. That's true. There, it, was kind of, it was kind of lost a little bit then. Exactly. It was like Bruce Lee and like Shaolin Kung Fu and like, you know, praying mantis style and all this. Kind of <laughs> yeah, <ridiculous> it was. <laughs> so I gave up on it because I couldn't tell which one, which of the martial arts really worked. And then when I was yeah. like 10 or 11, UFC started. Yeah. And it was amazing, obviously. And now you found out which martial art works and all that. But I was already past it. And I was like, I'm not going to go back into this. <laughs> I know. I always said, like, I wish I was like 10 years younger for that generation, because that's when it like kind of. Not like took off, but it was like it was definitely more mainstream then. That's for sure. Well, growing up when we did, we couldn't have even known to to study Muay Thai or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Like you wouldn't have even known. You would have tried Taekwondo or something. You, we didn't even know what worked or what didn't work. Yeah. The first couple of years of UFC, there was a bunch of like Wushu guys and Shaolin guys and uh, Karate guys competing and failing, until you realize that those martial arts actually don't work. And like, also like, the, and there's also like the the majority of the guys that are good in the UFC are like wrestlers, background wrestlers, like, you know, the, you know, like uh, Daniel Cormay and like Justin Gaethje, all these guys were like big collegiate wrestlers. So they were able to like push through with that. They basically had no fighting background though, which is kind of crazy. Yeah. It turns out that wrestling is really important. And then that on the ground stuff is really important. And then that some striking is important with elbows and knees. That's, I guess, basically. Yeah. Yeah. You see a lot of kick- kickboxers. Kickboxers are really good in the UFC. Um, boxers don't do well for some reason though. They really don't have that much success. I mean, they have success, but not like, not like the wrestlers do and, and the kickboxers do. Because they, they add that in, then later on, forget about it. They're, like, deadly, you know? What do you um, think about the Tyson fight that's coming? I'm really excited about that. So did they? When did they say they're doing it? December or no? In November. November. It's been- I mean, I want to see, like, I know Mike Tyson's going to take it, take it serious, but I don't know if Roy's going to take it serious. What do you think? Well, I saw the interview with Joe Rogan and Roy Jones this week. I think it was last week. Yeah, And uh, it really struck me. It was pretty interesting. Basically, Roy Jones was talking to himself for an hour and a half. He's really- <laughs> I didn't watch it yet. It was really interesting. He's really proud and very, he has a very strong ego. But you could tell yeah. he's a little concerned about the fight. What, like Mike Tyson's like? Yeah, I don't think he can win. No. But are they going to, is it, they said it was an expedition, like an, um, like uh, yeah. a, a like they're not, yeah, they're not like fully fighting, but like then what is it going to be like? How do you not fully box then? Like, what do you just, you know, is a sparring? Like, what are they going to do? Yeah. So Joe Rogan is famous for saying that Mike Tyson doesn't know what an exhibition is and he's just going to do whatever. Yeah. He's just going to throw like haymakers and just probably swing to like, to like, to the rafters. I mean, like Roy Jones, I could see controlling himself, but I don't see Mike Tyson controlling himself. Roy Jones. I mean, uh, Joe Rogan pointed out something really interesting about Roy Jones in the interview, which is he pointed out that Roy Jones's left arm, is way bigger than his right arm. And specifically his left bicep is bigger than all of his other muscles. So actually, if you look at the interview, you can see his, cause he does, apparently he does these, uh, well, I don't even know what they're called. The punch that comes from the side. Okay. Yeah. I don't know the name of it either. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, he does a lot of that. So his left bicep is activated. That's, that's crazy. So yeah. did Roy, did Roy Jones say that he's fully fighting? Did he make a statement saying he's going to like come out a hundred percent or? Yeah. But he was like making like a little notes about the fact that the Tyson camp or, or the organization are changing some of the rules of the fight ahead of time. And he's not so As, happy about that. For, for better or for worse? For worse for him, basically doing shorter rounds and stuff like that. Or less rounds. Oh, 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 oh. I mean, yeah. I know I talk to Brad Rowe almost like every day and he's the one that's doing all the um, that neuro training with him. Did you see that thing? Yeah, so Brad Rowe has been mentioned on Joe Rogan by Mike Tyson. 
and he's in California. Yeah. Who, who is he? I always hear his name. Um, Brad's actually from the East Coast. I actually moved to California pretty much the same time as Brad did. We both went because Ed Connors is the one that found him as well. So Brad went to the West Coast because of Ed too. And we lived together for a little bit. We, we were friends on the East Coast already. So like, and then I was kind of, Brad's like kind of one that got me to go to the West Coast. He was like, no, Ed's the real deal. You should do it. Take the opportunity, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, all right, fuck it. So I moved like a month after Brad did um, to California. And Brad never left, obviously. Brad's still there, but I left. But um, Brad's, you know, pro bodybuilder. He's a personal trainer. He does a lot more acting than I did, though. Like, I tried when I first got there, and he's like, he still does casting calls. Like, he loves it for some reason. I don't know why, but I fucking hated it, and I couldn't do it, you know? But he continuously showed up and got a ton of commercials though. Like he's actually been successful with it, but um, it's a very hard niche to, uh, to get into, you know? Yeah. But he's training Tyson with some like advanced kind of uh, recovery techniques or something like that. Yeah. They have that, that, um, Oh God, uh, the, the, uh, it's called uh, something with the N NeuroFit and, um newbie, the newbie, that's what it's called. And it's like that, electronic stim machine. I don't know exactly what it does, but I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know much about it, so I don't want to bash it or to pump it up, you know? Supposedly it works. So everyone that's used it loved it. Well, the interesting thing is that when you see Tyson come to his interview on, on the Joe Rogan show a month ago, Tyson is clearly much bigger physically. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. And you can tell his mood has changed. Obviously, he stopped smoking weed and stuff, so his, but his mood has changed. But when you look at Roy Jones, he does not look like he's on TRT. But Tyson does look like he is. But do you think that's just Tyson's genetics or do you think he's? I know. I was wondering. That's what I'm thinking. Like Roy Jones probably has good genetics too, but is he Mike Tyson? Now the person who would know if Mike Tyson likes to use TRT is your friend. Who... Yeah, I know. You know what? I never asked him that. I just asked him. <laughs> I just kept continually asked him about how, like, what does Mike look like? How good is he doing? You know, like. You know, basically just normal questions. I didn't ask anything yeah. like into intricate, but I'm sure Mike is. Come on. So the 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 legend is that Mike used to really like Halo testing. So I don't know if this is true or not, but supposedly used to be pretty into uh, steroids before. Like for boxing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, supposedly the night that he bit the guy's ear off, he was supposedly on Halo. Oh, Holyfield. Yeah, either either that the the, the story is Halo testing and cocaine or something like that affected him. What did you think about? Did you been, were you into boxing then? Yeah, I've always been following boxing. Did you were you like into it at the time though when he bit yeah, the Yeah, yeah, I was really uh, it was a weird I mean I was young. You were probably like 3 years older than yeah, me. Yeah, I was a baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What did you think about it when it happened? I remember I, my dad was very into boxing, so I remember watching it like when I was older too and I'm just like at the time actually, they didn't make that big of a deal about it. It was kind of like hush hush. They weren't like if it was that happened today's day and age yeah, it would have been. I mean, it would have been like, imagine like happening with COVID. That'd be fucking crazy, <laughs> you know. Like people would be freaking the fuck out. He would have been canceled, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I don't think he would have been. I think Tyson, if he was a twenty twenty superstar, it never would have been the same for him. No. It would have been like um, he represented a different uh, social uh, like sphere. Like today, in today's age, the aggressor is not championed. And Mike Tyson was the brute aggressor. Yeah, I think he happened at the right time. Like, exactly. if he happened during our, this not our generation, but this time, I don't think he would have been, I think he would have been suppressed a lot more, uh, right? Like, do you think they would have held him back? Yeah, I think he would have been someone, something that people didn't like. Because he was, you know, also with the rape charge and all that. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that, too. Yeah, he wasn't, you know, obviously he wasn't the cleanest um cleanest bill you know of his athlete but that's what that's what people appreciate now though like the raw attitude you know yeah he's really honest now the interesting thing about him is his wife so apparently since <sighs> he got like i got really bent out of shape with cocaine he met this lady that he knew for a long time who helped him recover and become the person he is today who's his wife i researched a lot about her i didn't know that the interesting thing about his wife is that she's the daughter of a muslim cleric from um, not Pittsburgh, but Philadelphia. You know where there's a lot of black Muslims in Philadelphia? Did not know that. You didn't know that? So no. her, her father's actually one of the famous ones. And she's actually, interestingly, both her father's family and her have been arrested for various kind of like charges that you would associate with the mafia. 
And she went into prison for, ta- I think, tax evasion for her father or something like that. Yeah, it's a really Whoa. suspicious like uh, group of people that he married. I've the- never heard of that, though. <laughs> Try to Google them. They're very interesting. You found it pretty easily? Yeah, yeah. You can't find a wiki page on her, but when you read more about her, her father is very well known. Damn. Yeah. I wonder what the real story to that whole thing is. So I watched your bodybuilding review of the Chicago Pro, and it was yes. very insightful. Uh, I thought we could briefly discuss some of the outcomes because I had some amateur or amateur uh, bodybuilding enthusiast opinions, which are oh, super relevant. Of course, but of basically, course. I, one of the most interesting things was Nick Walker, which I texted you about as it was happening. Yeah. So what was your overall impression of Nick Walker on stage is that he did well for himself, but that on stage it made him... Re- so obviously he showed up in shape. Obviously he's big, but I think a lot of these like... I'm not trying to insult the fan base, but like a lot of fair weather fans don't really know what they're looking at. They just see, they just measure the success of a bodybuilder by the, as big as their body parts are, you know, like, Oh, that guy's biceps are bigger. That guy's chest is bigger. That guy's legs are bigger. Oh, he should be, he should win. Mm. And when you get to that level, it's like way beyond that. I think, you know, that, right. I mean, like, I mean, you're aware that like proportions matter, inserts matter, uh, symmetry matters, you know, like having proportion, uh, body parts from like, like your torso to your legs, your hips, to your, your ankles, like how long are their arms, how long are their quads? Like everything has to be proportioned. And I think people don't look at it from like a, as a whole picture. They just look at it like, Oh, his frontal bicep looks better. Yeah. But that doesn't mean he's a better bodybuilder. You know, like if you look at Justin's body, he's pretty, he's pretty damn proportionate. You know, he's pretty, he's got really good symmetry. He's got, he's got wide clavicle. His, his delts look suspicious. I love, I like Justin as a bodybuilder a lot, but there was something going on with his delts at that show. And no, it so the delts like, are way too far. He took them way too far. I think one you is think you, you, no, you noticed it as well too. It wasn't just me, right? It could have been, well, it wasn't just you because well, we'll talk about that in a second, but he definitely, he must be injecting in it at least because his delts, his delts didn't look like that last show. Yeah. So I went and looked at him and I was like, Oh, that doesn't look, that looks weird. They were just, they weren't moving when he was posing either. Yeah. They were just frozen. <laughs> Everything else was moving pretty good, but uh, the arms were suspicious, but you know, then Justin does have his flaws too. Like his, his, his sweeps on his quads aren't as well. His triceps are pretty flat. Um, but you know, he does have really pretty physique. Does have round muscle bellies, his condition. Nick is just like his, if you want to pick a park, Nick, like his calves are longer than his quads, you know, his calves are very long and then his quads are very short and stubby. And then his torso is very long compared to his lower body. Like his upper body is much longer than his, his, his lower half. So it throws off the symmetry of his body. And then his lats are very high and the way he poses too, like his front double bicep and his front lat spread, it doesn't appease his physique because he's just, he's sucking up all the way. So his lats look even higher now instead of him crunching down and squeezing down on his lats to make his, his torso look shorter. So it looks more proportionate. He's like stretching all the way to suck in his stomach, you know, cause then if he, because at the same time, if he goes the opposite way, then his waist is going to look blockier, but then his torso won't look as long. So mm. it's kind of like a trade-off. It depends on what you want to look like. But I think he'd be better off c- crouching down on his on his stomach and, and, and his lats more so than stretching all the way out. Because it makes him look really long and weird looking, I think. And then um, his front lat spread, his hands are up here instead of down by his belly button, his waist. So you can't even see his front lat spread that well because he, he brings his hands up here to make his lace look shorter. You know what I mean? Like instead of having his hands at his hips and it just doesn't look right. And then, you know, then his side shots are good because obviously he's got good thickness. But when he turns around, um, the same problem. Like, yes, he's got a great double bi- rear double bicep, but proportionately it, it looks weird because his, his, his lower half is so short and stubby. And then his back is like very long, you know, but he's got good detail and stuff. But the like Steve Weinberger looks at all those things. He's not going to just be like, oh, he looks better. He wins or he's bigger. He wins. It's it, especially at that level. That's why they posed him so much. They went through like four rounds of posing, you know, the top two guys because they were so close. But, you know, you go down the line and go that do that for every bodybuilder and look at their proportions and see the different different type of body parts and, you know, and 
at the end of the day, the, the best bodybuilder is the one with the fewest weaknesses, you know? So that day, I think, I think Akeem deserved it. He looked really good. Yeah, I really think he did as well. I was so impressed by his uh, physique. It was really incredible. Uh, I think, I think, uh, but I, I wanted to leave a couple of comments. So one thing about Justin that I never saw anyone mention is that, I mean, everyone mentions his quads not matching up with his shoulders from the front. So he has a V instead of an X frame. Yeah. But also I noticed that he actually has a wider waist that you can yeah. see from behind. Yeah. So when he poses his, his back shots, if you look around his waist, you, you can, can actually, see it. You can see his extended abdomen. It, it wasn't like that though. He he was very tapered in his waist last First, year. Oh, last year, not at uh, New York. Yeah, New York, he still had a wide waist, but like last year when he competed, his waist was much tighter. I mean, it was it was actually really good. I don't know what – I don't know if maybe he carved up wrong or maybe he had some inflammation or something. I don't know if it's actually that it grew yet because obviously it's only one show or two shows. So it might be some type of inflammatory response going on that he didn't didn't, didn't treat well, you know, but – so what I wanted to ask you about is like, what is the future of Nick Walker and bodybuilding? Because Nick Walker came into this uh, or came into the public eye a couple of weeks ago saying that he's going to be Mr. Olympia, which I understand, of course, everyone, maybe that's why they're paying a lot of attention to him and grading him a bit more harshly. Actually, it's a really good outcome for your first pro show to get a third place. But you're commenting on something which is, is something you can't get around, which is basically yeah. he has the same kind of uh, structure as Lee Priest, but like a slightly taller. He has a very large... It's a very good, that's a good comparison. Uh, yeah, very similar to Lee Priest in that sense. And also there's a similarity, which I know it sounds a bit weird, but a similarity to Palumbo also in the sense that the guy has a lot of muscle for his body. But if he goes further, it's, it has to go wrong. There's, you can't, you know what I mean? Where, where, yeah. uh, maybe maybe Palumbo's body was very different because short torso was tall, legs were long, but he also looked awkward on stage. Yeah, and and... Like you said, like if he, let's say like, so he comes into this sport now as a pro at what is he? 25, 26. Right. And he's already ginormous. So like getting bigger for him right now, I don't think is going to accomplish anything because he's still going to be the same guy as he was at this show, essentially, you know, just, but like what gets bigger? Like what happens if he does get bigger? Like, what is that going to do for him? It's not going to help his him. His arms can't get bigger. I don't think it's possible. Yeah. No, like he needs to do more refining than anything but but even so he still stuck with the same frame that we saw like if he does refine things like it's still going to present the same problem that it did this weekend you know if he gets against somebody that's like Akeem or Justin there's no way he can beat them I don't care how much muscle he has it's not about that and that's what a lot of people don't get and like people are like oh it's just like Jay Cutler what the fuck are you talking about it's nothing like Jay Cutler you know, Jay Culler had a really good frame. <laughs> like he had wide ass shoulders. Nick's not that wide. You know, he's got he's got good width, but then it's it, you know it, it's not like so. J- Cutler had very very good width up top and was very boxy too. But it actually looked like he had a taper because his width was so huge from shoulder to shoulder that it actually made him look like he had a taper. Nick doesn't have that. He but has he width. Short legs. Yes, and and exactly, and then and Cutler was proportionate. He wasn't he wasn't built like Phil Heath, but he was very proportionate. Um, so he could obviously put the muscle on and still look good. But Nick, I just don't, you know, he could obviously win a show. I'm not saying he can't win a pro show, but to be Mr. Olympia, no, no, there's just there's. There's zero shot of that. Like, would, would the future be like the best case scenario? Be more. He like- could definitely make it to the Olympia. Yeah, but would it would the best case scenario say he does very well and keeps pushing himself? Would the best case scenario be something like Roly Winkler, like being he's about the same height? He could be very. I don't, I don't think he can make it that far. Oh really? Huh? I think he can make it to the Olympia, but I don't see him being top five in the Olympia. No. I think that that being top ten in Olympia means you have like the best genetics, you have the most muscle, you have the best conditioning. You know what I mean? Like that's like meant for the cream of the crop. You know. I think he can make it to the Olympia. Absolutely. He's definitely going to be able to win a pro show here and there because these lineups are not strong anyway, especially when people come off. That's his chance of sneaking up. But it also all depends on who's judging the show. Like Steve is never going to let that kid win a show. I'm sorry. Like Weinberger's judging. He'll, he'll give him the respect that he deserves, but he's not going to win a show. Cause like, 
it's just like, it's almost like it's a dead end for him after that. You know what I mean? Like, so what he wins the show and then he goes to the Olympia lineup. Then what, then what happens? He gets crushed. Like he can't stand next to Steve Kuklo or fucking any of these guys. Like even the guys that place like six to 10, like he'll get killed by them. You know, um, it just, it, all the, all his flaws will be exposed once he gets next to those guys, you know, he looks good by himself, but. Now, apparently one of the things that happened during the show is that Sean Ray was apparently commentating during the show. Yes. And so Fouad made a review of the show in which he took a, a moment to uh, complain about Sean Ray's commentary. Uh, I don't know what you call it, commentating, whatever. Yeah. And Sean was apparently uh, talking down about some of the new competitors in, in uh, classic physique. And Fouad has been having this thing on his show for a while where it started originally with Dave Palumbo, where he's saying that these older guys are talking uh, down about the new competitors in his generation or the generation below. Okay. And basically, he's against this older generation complaining about the current generation. And so he said this was an example of Sean Ray doing it and saying that he could do put perhaps a better, uh, a better job commentating without bringing down the competitors. So... It's pretty interesting. I was thinking, did you ever notice that considering that you're from the newer generation? Did you ever feel like the older generation is hating on you guys? I I have to hear what Sean, the only thing that pissed me off that I watched that Sean said, he kept calling Akeem Williams the wrong name, kept calling him <laughs> Max Charles. And I'm oh, just really? like, and I'm like, how the fuck are you messing that up? And it's not one time. It's not one time, man. Like he repeatedly did it, and like was like, oh, congratulations to Max Charles on the win. And I'm just like, <laughs> what the fuck? And then like he says Akeem's name wrong on purpose. I feel like he kept saying it wrong. He's like, oh, uh, I, I meant Akeem, not Akam. I'm like, what? I got like- to I I put something in, in defense of Sean Ray. Akeem is a very confusing name, and I say yes. this being an Arabic person. It is an Arabic name. The, the yes. name in Arabic is Hakim, which means the person that governs something. Sometimes in America, Arabic names are adopted by Americans, but they get the, they change the name slightly. So here it was Hakim, but the H was taken out. Yes. Like Hakim, which is really confusing even for myself. I was like cracking up. And then like the, the lady that was doing the commentary with him was just as bad as she, I don't want to call her any names. because I don't know who she was, but. She was terrible. Like when I say terrible, like she kept messing up who the competitors were. She was like, oh, I have so-and-so winning. And Sean's like, oh, he's placing fifth. She's like, oh, I mean the other guy. And I'm just like, oh, what, the black guy? Like, what the fuck? Like, there's only two black guys in the the line, like top five. Like, how the fuck do you fuck them up? I I was getting so mad listening to it, dude. But I thought that's what you're going to say Fahu was talking about. But I guess it was something else. I mean, right, though, it seems... uh like I'm not a bodybuilder, but I, I see what he's saying watching RX and stuff. It's always negative commentary about the, you know, the Dave, Dave definitely does it. I mean, absolutely. Lee Priest definitely does it. Um, I didn't know if, I mean, Sean's always been kind of like a dick. I mean, that's like kind of like his MO. Wait, wait, wait. We skipped over Lee Priest for a second. We, there's something interesting to talk about with, with regards to Lee Priest. So Lee Priest did a separate episode with Dave last week saying, uh, does Lee Priest believe Rami? So apparently Rami said he has coronavirus, didn't go to Spain. So I saw that, but I only, I didn't get the chance to watch the whole thing. What happened? So basically uh, they, they heard that Rami was in a gym soon after he said he got coronavirus through Dave. And Lee Priest is basically saying that uh, Rami is most likely lying and Lee Priest doesn't <laughs> believe him. And he shouldn't get his, Lee Priest's main point is he shouldn't get a special invite to the Olympia. Yeah, but Rami never said he was sick. By the way, the funny thing is while Lee Priest was talking about this, Lee said something about fake weights and Dave interrupted him and said, you just did fake weights. (laughs) No, like he doesn't believe. No no way. I I have to watch this though. Right after the video came out, I made a comment saying the core, the real question is, do we believe Lee? (laughs) Because no, (laughs) apparently he's he's gotten less. Yeah. He's gotten less than 6,000 on his, um, uh, it's like $4,000 still on it. Yeah. You got no money. Wait, hold on a second. Let's back up here. So Rami, all right. So I talked to Rami and his manager pretty consistently. The guy is, is one of his friends. No way. Rami tested for the antibodies. The test was like an APC test or something. That's all it tested was for the antibodies. And then the other test came back out and it said that he was negative. So like, like the real test, cause it takes a couple of days to come back. So Rami never said he was like 
like, I'm sick. I can't work out. Like he just said, Oh, I tested positive. I'm screwed. I can't come now. They won't let me out of my country. Oh. So that's why, so that's why I don't get why Lee's like getting all mad and bent out of shape. Like Rami never was like, uh, uh, I'm sick. Like, you know, like he's pissed off. He can't go because they're, they're claiming that he is sick and he's not, you know, Interesting. That's what doesn't make sense to me. You know, maybe they didn't see the whole thing, but like, or look into it enough to start complaining about it. But um, yeah, like uh, even Chad, like I talked to Chad all the time. Chad said the same thing, right? Rami's not even sick, but he said he was sick a couple months ago. So maybe the antibodies could be still in his system for like the flu, because that's basically all they're testing anyway. So basically they wouldn't let him travel. And that's they why like, he wasn't allowed out of the country. No, wouldn't let him leave. Yeah. That makes sense. Well, that's, yeah, that's even, more, but. That's, even, that's even funnier, though, that Dave did a whole fucking entire video on it. And <laughs> the fucking the truth is not even there. <laughs> no, it's just Lee. But but I just want to I just want to make a comment because someone, comment, someone commented on my Instagram the other day. I made a, a story about the, that. I think it was that video with Lee Priest and Dave. I was just commenting because Lee was saying that Alzheimer's disease isn't that scary because when you get Alzheimer's disease, you don't remember anything. So you just keep forgetting stuff. So it can't be that scary. And I know it sounds like I was being nitpicky, but the reason why I commented on that on my thumbnail was because I used to think this myself. I always used to wonder like, if you're just forgetting things when you're older, how bad can that really be? But the problem is Alzheimer's disease almost never shows up without really bad anxiety and depression. And this oh, I didn't know that. Because it's in the brain and you're actually getting damage in your brain and your brain's your soul. So that's why I made that comment. I wasn't hating on Lee Priest. And this is not hatred to disagree with the guy. No, no. But yeah. I get what you're saying, though. I, I, I yeah. fully get that. Um, but, out, yeah, but would you get stressed out, though, from that, though, since you can't remember stuff? So maybe you would get, like, anxiety over it since you're forgetting things all the time? It's like a basal level of anxiety that has nothing to do with the fact you're forgetting stuff. Just to do with the fact that you're losing brain cells. Oh, okay. That makes sense. That makes sense. By the way, Johnny Jackson also competed in. Uh, yeah, that was a fucking disaster. I mean, he looked conditioned, but like his legs are just so bad. I mean, did you see the pictures? Yeah, he was very conditioned. I mean, it was. Yeah, it looked very, very good. Actually, like pretty damn conditioning. Like, I mean, like, like sharp, but the legs are just like. I mean, my legs are probably bigger now, and I haven't worked them out in like two years. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, he just has, he never had sweeps on his legs at all. They're so narrow. Do you want to compete? Honestly, I don't follow him really anymore, even though I used to love him. Like, I really did like him as a bodybuilder, but not because, like, he was a good bodybuilder. I just liked the way he was. Like, he was just a nice guy and he trained hard and just, you know, like, just a normal dude, you know? Um, but I don't know what was the purpose of coming back. I, I don't – these guys need to stay in retirement. Like, they got to – like, he's not like a young buck anymore. He had a full gray beard. Like, it just looked weird. Like – I don't know. It really worked well for some of the '90s guys, like uh, like Flex and uh, and those guys that came back. But they were so young when they stopped, though. They were like still only in their 30s when they came. You know what I'm saying? Like so, like those guys were in their young 20s competing at the Olympia. You know what I mean? Like that doesn't happen now. True. Which is like, so now when they come back, it's like they're only like you know 32 or something. You know what I mean? Like, said these guys being in their 50s or 40s, it's just crazy. Nick, I got to ask you something. Have you ever met Jeremy Buendia? Oh, God. Have you met him? Um, because you lived in California, you seem to know everything. Yeah, I I see, I've we actually were friends at one point, if you oh. want to call it that. Yeah, until he like I don't want to say like lost his marbles, but like he turned into a weirdo. You know what I mean? Like I couldn't be friends with him anymore. Like just like like the 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 bipolarness, you know, like the moodiness. Like I never got treated like that as like a friend from somebody. You know what I mean? Like my guy friends were all like, yeah, we have our problems, but we don't take it out on each other. You know what I mean? Like I personally <laughs> felt like that kid would take out like his anger on me, and I'm just like, this is the weirdest <laughs> relationship. You're like you're a guy. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just weird. <laughs> it's, just, it's just weird to me. Like you just don't do that, especially when like. You're more associates than like best friends. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care about your shit. Like, I don't want you to like text me about like your drama with your girlfriend. Like, I could care less. I don't know. You know what I mean though? Like, like we're friends, but like, yeah, we, we talk, actually, actually we're more personable than I was with him. So that, that actually says a lot. So it wouldn't be that weird if I said to you, Hey bro, like leave me to fuck alone in a bad mood or something. But it, it was like, it was like every day with him about something else. Like there was just so much drama tied to his name and I actually if my YouTube channel was still up I actually did a I did a podcast with him at the time 
to kind of help him because he was like, everybody was, do you remember the time when he attacked Dexter Jackson? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That was a while ago. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. So that I made a, I did a podcast with him to kind of like, like help identify himself better because he was coming off the wrong way. And I defended him and I was one of our friends. And then like literally like right a month after that is when like he started bad mouthing me to everybody. Like how I'm like, I'm a, just saying, saying random shit that wasn't true. And I was like, dude, like I stuck my dick out for you to everybody saying you're a good guy. And like, you just had like a bad day and you're just having problems, personal problems. And it's just coming out the wrong way. And like, I was defending you and now you're going to rip me apart. Like go fuck yourself. So he blocked me on everything. I, I haven't talked to him since. And that was the last time I talked to him, but he's like, he's got some serious deep problems, bro. Those videos were weird. Very weird. The videos, are, you know, what's weird though. I've never seen so many text messages from a guy that I don't know before. <laughs> I've read so many text messages. Very, that's what I mean yeah. though. That's what, that's what would happen though. It's Over weird. Like years, I've seen so many on different videos. Like it's like an angry girl. That's like, really yes. And, and it's like, you will do this now. And people are like, dude, just calm down. He's like, you'll do it now. <laughs> it's always like, bro, and, and then look like, the next day he's saying, sorry, it's fucking weird. Yeah. I wonder if I, I screen captured everything at the time. Cause I thought he was going to delete it and he did delete it. And then I was going to send it to you to laugh. And I was like, I'm not even going to bother you with this right now. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll just I'll tell you about it when I see, like, I talk to you. Cause it was just like, that whole thing was just so crazy. I'm just like, what is he even raging out about? You yeah. know what I mean? Really angry. So what did you think about the lack of presidential debates this week? The, did you watch either of them? Yeah, I did. Which one did you watch? I watched them both actually. Because I, I had, I know they were both on different channels, but I, I went and watched Biden afterwards. Actually, I started out watching Biden because I didn't know Trump was on at the same damn time, and I was yeah. like, why the hell did they do that? So then I started watching Trump, and he was over like literally at sixty minutes on the dot, and then Biden went on for like almost two hours, which was really <laughs> weird. So I was like, whatever. So I watched Biden after that, and then I went back and watched the ones I like the parts I missed. But I think the Trump one was very weird and awkward. Uh, what's her name reporting, uh, uh, you know, questioning him. She was such a bitch the entire time to him (laughs) asking like condescending questions and, you know, like literally just trying to set him up for failure, you know, asking about cute on, like asking about like things that just make no sense. Like she already knows the answers to, um, I thought that was very awkward and weird. And then I go watch Biden. It's a totally different, um, type of, uh, you know, type of energy. Like it's more positive. Like, yes, they supposedly said the people in the stands were, uh, pro Republicans, but I don't believe it because they weren't really asking any like, uh, you know, deep, deep rooted problem questions. It was kind of like easy. It was like a layup for him. You know what I mean? Except for that one black kid that asked him a question. Did you see that one? No, I didn't watch Biden. Yeah, oh my God, bro. He made him cause Biden, the kids, I forget what he asked about something about, making black people feel safe and whatnot and yada, yada, yada. And then Biden gave like this elaborate 15 minute answer, not taking a breath, but it didn't really make any sense. It kind of like went off on topics. And then he says to the kid, like, did I answer your question? The kid's like, Mm, not really. <laughs> and everyone in the place started cracking up and I was like, Oh man, that's so embarrassing. Like I legit was getting anxiety watching Biden answer questions because it was so weird. Like he just went in circles, dude. And like the stuttering and I, I, the, the mispronunciation of words, like he couldn't say words. I was just like, God, just get him off. Like, this is not. I noticed something weird about Trump when I was watching it, which <clears throat> this isn't, by the way, this is not pro Trump. So what I noticed was this, he did this thing. He was talking and he did a little bit of like a grinding of his teeth and he did it like to the side. So he would be like this, like a little bit of that. If you rewatch it, anyone who's listening to this, you'll see Trump, his jaw switched to the side and he did a little bit of grinding while he was there. Is that like that little, that little face he makes too? When He, he wasn't what? doing it before. I've never seen it on any other interview, but he was making these faces and he was grinding a bit on the side. Then. I don't think this is a drug he's taking for the for the interview. I think it probably had something to do with the coronavirus drugs. So maybe he's taking some kind of amphetamine related drug for the for the lungs. But he was hyped up and he was grinding his teeth. Now, living in Los Angeles for six years, I can pick out anyone that's been using a lot of meth because 
I can see it really fast. If the jaw is slightly aligned to this side, like there's one guy, actually, now that we mentioned it. That's funny. There's a, there's a guy that comes on Palumbo's channel. He hasn't been on recently. He, I forgot his name. He's, he's a white guy, lives in Orange County. He has this like TRT clinic or something. Every time he comes on Palumbo's channel, I see his jaws like here. I mean, he's just, like talking with he's his going nuts. That only happens. I've never seen anyone do that except on amphetamines for a very long time. So if someone's jaw moves over, you you notice it. So I saw Trump doing that. I was mm. like, oh, it's not going to go well. And then I now saw the lady. Now I got to watch it. The lady was like trying to interrogate him. And I was like, yeah, that was weird. It didn't go well. So I, <laughs> I didn't watch it. But the best thing to do is watch the Saturday Night Live review of it, which was really funny. Oh, I got to watch that. Yeah, I, didn't know I didn't know they were still doing that stuff. Oh, it's on Hulu. You should watch it if you have Hulu. Oh, man. Yeah, I have Hulu. Yeah, I got to oh, watch it. Was it was hilarious. It was hilarious. They're basically openly like asking. Who was, playing, who was playing Trump again? What's his? The, uh, um, the guy from. Uh, yeah, the actor. Yeah, yeah. He's, he, he was in the show called Will and Grace. Have you seen Will and Grace? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, wow. I saw the preview for it. Fuck. He's really good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I saw that. It looked good though. I want to watch that now. That's a good reminder. It's yeah, a it was. Um, it was. Um, it was, like you said. It was more of like an interrogation, more than a uh, like an interview. To it, it wasn't praising Trump. You know what I mean? They weren't trying to praise him at all. No, um, the, and the, like and the, the people asking the questions, they they were okay. They weren't that bad. But um, I I think Trump carried himself fine, but it was just very uncomfortable watching it. It was not like a uh, you know a proud, like happy, uh, environment. You know what I mean? It wasn't like trying to like pump up Trump. It was more so like, let's attack Trump. At so the, end of the day, the guy's over 70 years old. He just had coronavirus. I mean, he can't do that well being interrogated, having just had coronavirus it's over 70 and, and, and fucking Miami in the heat in a suit yeah. sitting outside. Like, I'm like, what the fuck? Who taught, who thought of this idea? And then meanwhile, Biden's inside with like five people, in air conditioning on a couch, like chilling for, you know, it was just such a weird thing. The whole thing, the way it went down. Now, speaking of bodybuilding heads, I don't know if you saw my uh, Instagram story lately. I found, do you know this guy called Doc, Dr. Mike Israetel? Have you heard of him? Why does it sound? Maybe it sounds familiar because of you. He has a crazy bodybuilding head from GH where it splits on the side. Oh, that's why. That's why. I remember. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. I, I just thought to mention it here in case someone who's watching the Instagram story sees it. So I found out recently, Mike Israel has the craziest head. He, it actually split here on the sides, which is not very convenient, actually. So he has a split here. And then also I, this week, I came across another person's head who surprised me as well, who's Tim Poole. Do you watch the Tim cast? Yes, I've seen it. Yes. Yeah, I don't watch them. I don't watch them religiously, but I've seen them. Yes. Did you know Tim Poole is bald? No, I didn't know that. He's completely bald. I completely. didn't know that. He's wearing this thing on his head the whole time. And oh, no, I didn't know that. Know, very surprising. It's always surprising when you when you see somebody who always wears a hat and they turn out to be bald. Interesting. Yeah. Like bald bald doesn't even have like a No, no, no. He has he's a crown. He has like Yeah, the crown thing. Yeah, yeah. Nothing on the top. Damn. Fascinating. Yeah, that is fascinating. How's your sauna going? So, um, I, when I first used it the first couple of days, I couldn't get over like 150 with it because it just literally was not, I was not used to it. And yeah. like, I guess I'm sensitive, but now I'm up to 170 um, for like 40 minutes. Um, wow. It's rough. I mean, it's, I didn't think it would get that hot because it's like, I'm like, oh, it's a portable one because it's, it's advertised as portable. So you can like kind of take it. It comes with this huge carrying bag. It's monstrosity. I don't know who would carry it around anyway, but um, <laughs> it does fold up pretty conveniently and stuff or whatnot. And the chair goes inside. But when I tell you, bro, that thing gets hot, like you are cooking in that thing. Like, and I, you know, what's so weird too. I was going to ask you about it. I don't ever smell. I could go to the gym like three days in a row and not put the order on. And I never smell. Like, I just don't have a smell to me. I'm not, and I'm not bragging or anything. I just, I just don't have a smell to me. Even if I sweat or anything, I go in that thing for 40 minutes. I smell like BO immediately when I come out of that thing. Is it because of the toxins coming out and stuff? Maybe. So people have talked about this theory that when you're in the sauna, you sweat more often and you cause some of the toxins to come out, which causes this kind of like, if, for example, if you leave the sauna and lay down on a, on a bench from the gym for yeah. a while and then get off it, you'll see like a stain from the sweat where you can sort of see it. 
And people have thought that these are toxins, but there's no studies on this. So we don't really know. We don't really know. Yeah, but definitely there are some uh, uh, like heavy metals and stuff that get out of our body easier by being sweated than being urinated. Oh, so okay. sweating is useful, actually. Yeah. I mean, I feel really good using it. I mean, I definitely, especially in the morning when I first, not like when I first get up, but like maybe like an hour or two after I get up, I go in there before I go shower. And uh, it's just a good way of like, I just feel better on it. I don't know. I, I've used the sauna for a long time now, and I always felt really good and recharged from using the sauna at the gym. But those are more of like a dry sauna or wet saunas. I didn't really have a chance to use the red light too much. So that's why I wanted to see how this worked, you know, honestly. But um I, I just like sweating. I feel so much better when I get that out of my system. So um, especially because I'm not like weight training right now and getting that, that blood flow and the sweat going every day. So this is like good. Cause I do my little bit of cardio, like my half hour bullshit, low intensity cardio. And I do that and I feel really good from it, but yeah, because um, right after you go into the sauna, your cardio continues from the cardio because your heart rate doesn't slow down because of the heat. No, no. You yeah. My heart rate. It feels good right after that because now you're nice and warm too. I am going to go to the gym today. Oh, really? What are I'm you going to do? I'm, I'm going to hit some weights today. I, uh, you're doing a tour. You're, you're traveling. Saying <laughs> 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 hi to the people you haven't seen in a while. I'm going to, yeah, I'll do my rounds and do my, I'll do like my presidential wave. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hit some weights today. I think, uh, I think it's time. I don't know. I've been teetering at this weight, so I feel like this is probably the lightest I'm going to get. I haven't hit lower than 238 and I'm pretty much like 240, 245 every day, you know? Um, so I think this is probably the lowest my body's going to allow me to go. I think this is like, unless I like really starve myself and like go to the next level, but I don't want to do that because I'm already like not eating much as it is. So I think I've plateaued as far as getting down. I mean, basically I've got down this weight without even working out. So you know, I, I lost all that weight without even doing cardio or weight training, nothing. So I figure, why not? Look, this is a, the, probably the best time to go back and hit the weights and stay lean doing so. I'm not going to get fat or get out of shape. So, um, and see what I can, see what I can do with myself, see what I can look like, you know, but I'm not going to go back on and all that crap, obviously. Um, I'm just going to stay on when I'm on for now. That's it. The interesting thing about the sauna is the one I sent you. So I know you support one company, which you've been using. The one I sent you is also an infrared. I didn't know that. I checked it out. It's yeah, it is infrared. Yeah. So the reason why I was. Confused, is there a difference though in the red light though, or no? Well, it's not about the red light really. It's just about the heat. And most infrareds can't produce high enough in interior heat in the sauna. So maybe yours, if it really does hit 170, then it's hitting high heat for sure. Yeah. But because just for anyone who's listening who hasn't read the research on saunas, you can search the word sauna in my channel. I have a short video that has the best citations on the subject. Basically, sauna use is really associated with extending life, uh, reducing cardiovascular disease, reducing blood pressure, reducing inflammation in the body, improving the immune system, all these things. But all the studies have been on, done on dry saunas, on finished saunas, not on right. infrared saunas. So I, the experts say that infrared saunas are not strong enough, like Yari Lokanen, who I've been in contact with before. But maybe they aren't. Maybe they, they have stronger ones. I don't know. I really have to get one myself. I don't know the temperature of a dry sauna. How hot does that get? Well, they go up to like uh, 200 degrees. Uh, uh, oh, they go that high. Fahrenheit. Between 170 and 200 is the average finish. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's... I mean, you, I mean, it, it, it cooks the living shit out of you. I mean, it's I mean, it definitely worth. I like those ones you sent me though. Those are, I've seen those before. I didn't know that was the same company though. The ones you sent me, those are, uh, those are sick. I mean, really sick. So. In other news this week, before we uh, cut off. So we're doing a weekly episode now, right? So we're going to do a bit shorter ones because they're every week. But before we cut off, I found an interesting piece of news uh, this yesterday, actually. So I've been saying for some time on my podcast that there are people in the world that are far more wealthy than the Amazon.com guy and then all these different kind of guys and that I've heard of these people living in the Middle East before. So there was a recent article uh, in a British newspaper that the ruler of Abu Dhabi in the UAE owns over five billion in land in London, land and properties and stuff like that, which makes him 
the largest, uh, at least he owns more uh, land in Britain and, and uh, properties in Britain than the whole British royal family. <laughs> and, and then any, any aristocrat in Britain, including the Duke of Westminster, is worth over a billion. And he, uh, so apparently he owns so much land in his name in, in London that he owns more than any other individual, which is a billion right. property. Is it, inher- is it inherited? Did they say that? No, no, no. He bought this recently in the last 10 years. The Jesus. funny thing is that he has 30 brothers and they all inherited about the same amount from their father. And then he's, the got, f- he's got about the same amount of sisters. And then he's got properties not on his first name. So anyone who's interested in this, you can Google it and you see who what really the... rich people. Yeah. <laughs> That is fascinating, especially that he did it himself. That that's even and that like that's recent. In his name, yeah, he has obviously stuff that's not in his name, of course. Yeah, that's so mind-boggling. Crazy. I'll send you the article afterwards. What is it? Just because of the oil? Is that why they're so wealthy? Yeah, basically, all the oil and uh, liquefied and natural gas was bought. Like, imagine buying from a country oil, but every time you buy the oil, it goes to someone's private account. Well, oh wow! So it's on a different level. It, where yeah, that's a whole other level like in Africa where natural resources are owned by families of the government and stuff like that. Right, right, right. Man, that's, do you think Dubai is going to be still evolving? Like, like it has been over the last 10, 15 years, or you think it's going to slow down? It's a really interesting subject, actually. You know, I used to live in Dubai. So Dubai. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh yeah. For a long time. Dubai was. What did you, what did you, how did you like it there? I loved Dubai in the nineties, but in the, like it was really fun until 2004, 2005. And then after that, it just blew up too big. And it, the mm. city grew out of, like it came to be, you would, you had been living in the city for a long time. You used to know everybody, you go hang out a certain place. And now you know nobody. People right. around the world just traveled and settled there. And mainly the, the biggest problem with this was that Dubai used to be a nice city to live in. And, and it, it was made up of, of a lot of people with shared interests and people with good values. And when Dubai, Dubai developed this international reputation as being a place where people come to party and to buy expensive cars and stuff like that, it attracted a kind of people to come and settle there that uh, aren't the kind of people you want to hang out with all the time, like materialistic people. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Dubai became a place where people sort of, it's like where playboys hang out. Like, like, a, like a Vegas thing. Like a Monaco slash, uh, yeah, Monaco more than Vegas. Monaco is really annoying. If you ever go there, you'll, you'll get a... Really? Is Monaco that bad? Oh, it's the worst. It's the worst. Really? There's nothing good about that place whatsoever, except people showing off and being ego driven. And there's nothing. It looks, looks insane. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's insane if you want to show off and spend money and be a who's yeah. who, who has yeah. this, I have this, but that's yeah, all it has. A big dick contest type of thing. Exactly. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why Larry wheels wanted to, to move to Dubai. I don't know. What was the, the well, draw? I don't know. I think maybe he has some kind of business opportunities, but actually one of my friends is often with him in Dubai. Uh, actually my friend who hangs out with him a lot has a private zoo. So Larry's probably, is that your friend? If if Larry has been with lions or tigers, then that's a close. Yes. Yeah. I just saw that on his. Yeah. I just saw that on this thing. Not that long ago. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Very like 15 years ago. Holy shit. That's fucking fun. I was literally just talking to somebody about that like three days ago, two days ago, not even about the whole, cause I was looking at monkeys for myself <laughs> <laughs> and uh, did you, and the guy was like, Hey, did you see Larry wheels with this, this, um, uh, this, this, with his tigers and lions and the guy that has them. And he sent me the guy's Instagram and I was like, no, I didn't see it. He said, why don't you ask him if he has monkeys for you? And I was like, he's in fucking Dubai. How am I going to get a fucking monkey from Dubai to here? You know, I was like, here, exactly. Yeah, crack it up though. But that's funny. I was just looking at his page. That's hilarious. Oh man, it's a small world. So why did you leave Dubai? Just because of the family? Well, I'm, I'm from the middle East and from the right. my mother's America. So, right. you know, my, my half my family's in the U S so, gotcha, gotcha. But also, like to be honest, it's a different lifestyle than what we grew up in in Dubai. Now it's like I said, so flash. Have Have you been back recent? No, not in over over five years. Oh, okay. But that's but sort of recent, though. You they've know. been in an economic crisis since, or well, not crisis, but like recession since like two thousand. I've I've watched like a lot of things on the um, History Channel or Discovery Channel about that because I was so fascinated when they started building all those crazy islands and everything and all those crazy buildings. I used to watch all those documentaries on it. And then they, they said everything like kind of came to a screaming halt. Like all the real estate got fucked up. 
all the houses that were like prepaid for didn't get built on those islands and everything. And like real estate kind of took a big hit at the time. Um, it was over leveraged. It was like, yeah, yeah. But that's just Dubai. Keep in mind, the UAE is seven Emirates and Dubai is sort of this tourist destination kind of place like that, where Dubai never had oil historically. Dubai only had oil for a couple of years. So most of Dubai is built through business and trade and it being a tourist tourist job. Whereas Abu Dhabi, which is the other place we talked about, is very oil rich. So right. Dubai may be suffering economically, but the country is not suffering as So where they're, where they're having the UFC fights now, the Abu Dubai, Abu that's Dhabi? Abu Dhabi. Uh, oh, that's, that's different too. So the guy I just mentioned to you that owns all, all these properties in London, he has a younger brother who's really obsessed with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and UFC. So he sort of, I think he either bought into the UFC or something like that. Yeah, I think they're their partners for the overseas fights over there. Yeah, because the, one of the Gracie brothers is constantly living in Abu Dhabi. Oh, wow. It's a lot, of, a lot of ties. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Actually, speaking of that, uh, I also noticed that there was a, a Me Too, uh, like someone complained that one of the princes in the UAE harassed her sexually or something. It came out in the news yesterday. But I don't think it's likely. He's, he's one of the most uh, prominent and well-known guys. You can Google it. It's like a sexual harassment claim. Yeah. It was the first I- time I've ever seen this. Have you seen, I mean, you've had to have, what do you think about this whole Hunter Biden thing going on with the whole? Yeah, I mean, that's, well, this is obvious, right? I mean, none of us really know any details that the others don't, but I mean, we know that politicians are corrupt and, you know, this is the most obvious step. I mean, how can it be more obvious? It's, it's clear as day, the guy is corrupt, the guy's son is corrupt. Do you, did you see uh, Rudy Giuliani's, Rudy Giuliani's interview about the whole thing? No. On his Instagram, I mean, on his YouTube, like it's called like Common Sense is YouTube. It's like a 40 minute interview with like one of the White House officials. I'll check it and out. He, and he talked about, I can send you a link for it. And he talked about, you know, how they came across the hard drive, like how, what, what the, the series of events were, how it all happened. And they kind of like, he stressed about how bad it's going to be and how they're going to release the information like very, very, very gradually until the election. Yeah. And, and he's like, and he's like, don't worry. There's like some bombs come like he like really like, <laughs> and they kept, they kept stressing like, well, how do you know it's Hunter Biden's laptop? And he's like, well, you know, wait till you see the images. He's like, there's no reason why someone would be walking around a computer, you know, with all these images. And then he's like, and Hunter Biden's lawyer actually called the computer shop to get the computer. But the guy already made like five copies of it and everything already gave him the FBI and everything. So like it was already, you know, it was already gone, you know, but like, I think the whole thing is just so crazy though. Like the way it's coming out, is just like mind boggling, you know, like <laughs> this is all happening now. It's just it's like crazy times. That's for sure. Yeah. It's, it's like every day there's some other craziness going on. It's like, it's never ends. It literally never ends. It's something else every day. I mean, the, the, the Hunter Biden thing, though, the fact that, like, uh, Twitter was able to hide it and all that stuff. Did you see about that? Did yeah. You know and, yeah, he, like, they, like, you know, blocked uh, Kaylee McKenney's, like, wow. uh, 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 page <laughs> and Facebook and everything from. But it was, like, a New York Post article. So, like, what was, you can't repost an article now? It's, it's I don't know, man. It's, it's fucking really weird, this whole thing, you know? Like. I'm sure you had intuitions that this went on too, but now like seeing it, like it's like serious shit. Like this is. And yet, and yet probably half or more of the U S is going to vote for Biden knowing, knowing the Hunter Biden stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like it's this happening too late. Like this is like, you know, a lot of people probably voted already. Uh, that's true as well. Yeah. Right. Like we're like two weeks out now. So I don't know. How long do you think it's going to take to find out who's, who's going to win this election? You think it's going to be like months or you think it's going to be like weeks? Yeah, I, I'm afraid it's going to be months. I, I, I'm most curious about what's going to happen after the election when both of the people announce that they've won. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, Trump said he's not. Trump said he's not leaving. No, no one's leaving. They're both staying. And, you know, there was a time in Christian we'll, history. We'll have a co-op. Did you ever hear of the time when there were two popes? I don't know if you've heard of this. Oh. There used to be two popes. There was a period of time where there were two popes. Now there will be two presidents. <laughs> oh, can you imagine? Oh my fucking God, dude. This this is just like never ending of drama, you know, but the Democrats and Republicans used to be able to get along. It was just the political party. It never was like, there never was like a split where it's like people hate each other. Now it's, it's just like so different. 
this is why that that social dilemma movie is really i think it, it has some important outcome because there's something fundamentally in this in the in the fundamental structure and mechanism of u.s politics that changed in recent yeah. where people start to hate each other that's yeah, it's... never been there before and it, i think has something to do with technology or foreign interference or both there has to be something yeah. that's that's Bizarre. causing this the um, uh, everyone dividing like this over politics like it was never like this growing up my dad was a pretty political person growing up so i never remembered everything like this type of anger or hate you had your opinions and you guys would get along and they would be able to be able to cooperate but never was like segregated where like if you're a republican or you're a democrat like they hate each other yeah. it's like it's just so silly when you think about it it's really crazy. You know what's weird? I just found out because everyone talks about how the Constitution has amendments and these amendments are really important. So I thought the amendments were all old. So I was like Googling to see when is the latest amendment that happened? And it's actually in the 90s. Did you know that? I did not know it's that. It's like the 23rd or 30 something amendment. It's in the early 1990s. And it was an amendment just to make sure that the House of Representatives can get salary, uh, their salaries raised over time. So these amendments are all over the place. I mean, Damn. <laughs> I didn't realize that. I thought they were like major and there was only like a couple of them. So nothing's been updated essentially. But apparently you can amend the constitution whenever you feel like it. I, I didn't realize that. I did not know that either. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. so many people, so many people are scared though, that this country is going to like become communist and all this other thing. But I'm always like, well, we have a constitution, but then it's like kind of scary though to think about like they can, no, people are legit. There's a lot of people in the U.S. who do not are not happy with the Constitution, especially on the left. Right. And right. they genuinely want to change the Constitution. Yeah. Yeah. There's, it's pretty crazy times. It's yeah, fun it's, to watch over this and shadow every week and see what happens. I think the next two weeks will probably be like pretty full of uh, bombs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Of, of, you know. I'd like to see what happens. I think they're doing another debate this week, right? They're supposed to do one for real this week. I have no idea. Now I stop following them as much. <laughs> Just gonna see what happens. Uh, yeah. Anyway, okay. I'll check. I'll check back in with you next week. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Uh, and we'll keep uh, chatting about the stuff in the crazy world of bodybuilding over text. Yes. <laughs> All right. I'll talk week. to you soon.